I'm coming to you from Spokane, Washington. It's where I live and I work and I raise my family and I do all of the crafty things here. It's been about five or six months since I've podcasted last. It's been a long few months. Um, so anyways, I plan to talk to you a little bit about some big changes that are happening um, over the next couple weeks. Um, but for now, you can find me at um, Graceland underscore wool on Instagram. You can find my Patreon account at um, Grace and Wool. Uh, obviously, you can find me here as Hello Grace. And you can find my shop on Etsy right now um, as Graceland Wool. I got rid of the Shopify account for the most part. Um, Advents are still going out. Um, the last couple will be going out this week and then Shopify will be completely closed off. It just didn't make sense for me to have such a big post as I have not been producing a lot um, because I do work Monday through Friday, nine to five at a regular nine to five job. <laughs> so um, anyways, that's one of the biggest changes that are happening right now. So if you log into gracelandwool.com, you won't find me because I have to figure out how to reroute my domain or my web address or whatever. Um, it took me a really long time to do that when I went from Etsy to Shopify and now it's taking me twice as long to figure out how to reverse it all. So anyways, um, yeah, you can find me on Etsy. Currently I just have patterns listed that I, um, have been some of my most popular patterns actually. Um, I will be slowly adding more and more and more onto that website for people who, um, don't have Ravelry any longer. I wanted to be able to give you a spot to purchase my patterns regardless of where you decided to stay um but all of my patterns are still on Ravelry so I'm just giving you a secondary platform actually <sighs> I'm drinking tea right now um in my sweet mug I bought two Christmases ago at this craft fair um, locally on the South Hill and this gentleman made all of them by hand and I got this one because one I loved the design in the in the front and two it was like the perfect handle for me um, every way that I hold it it just is super comfortable so that's kind of how I choose I can choose my mugs <clears throat> um, yeah so this is primarily a knitting, spinning fiber podcast, um, but I do want to talk to you because it has been so long, a little about what I've been doing, some of the fun adventures I've gone on, some of the craziness that's happened, um, kind of the shenanigans of it all, and if, as Amy Beth would say, <laughs> um, and then maybe jump into what I've been working on lately. I'm not going to show you everything that I've done or knit or worked on or finished over the last five or six months because I don't have most of it. Most of it was gifts. Um, and the other part is that I couldn't remember if I tried all of the things that I was working on. I know that I finished quite a few things. Um, I would tell you that you could go look on my Ravelry page, but I don't update that as regularly as I should, um, which is one of the things that I'm wanting to work on this next year in 2020. Um, so anyways, okay, let's get started. What's been happening? Um, I took a pottery class with some friends a few weeks ago. I guess it's been a little over a month ago. Um, I'm really excited. I should be getting my pottery pieces back next week. It was so much fun. It was like a three hour class. Um, no, it was more like a four hour class. It was supposed to be a three hour class, but it ended up being a four hour class. 
and it's this gal who has a studio space inside her home and she has been doing selling teaching pottery for years and she basically turned her hobby into um, into her job but she doesn't call it a job because she loves getting up and doing it every single day um, she is a mentor uh, to my daughter's high school as well in their pottery department um, so that was really really cool I made I ended up making four bowls they're smaller I did make them all different sizes I wasn't trying to make a set for the table um, I was trying to make different pieces for different parts of my house like I did make one that I thought would be a really cute candy dish um, <clears throat> anyway so I'm hoping next week when I have those pieces back because um, they will have been done being glazed and fired then I can show them to you but I am so excited about those um, so that was like the biggest new thing that I tried and it was because one of our dear friends family friends for 32 years 32 years now um, basically said I I want to do this um, and so one of her daughters and her daughter's three friends she invited me um, longest friends I guess uh, we got to go do this and experience it and pottery is no joke you guys it is so hard to do but it was so so much fun um anyways I can't talk about that enough but that was one of the biggest things that's happened um the funnest things that's happened anyways um the next thing that happened, I do want to talk to you a little bit about what I'm wearing. Um, I did come up with, come out with a brand new pattern. It's a sweater pattern. Obviously, it's the Autumn Pine Pullover. I just released this pattern this month. Uh, you can find it on both Ravelry and my Etsy shop. Uh, so, it is so much fun. Um, I'm going to try and stand up. Um, I guess I'll, first I'll hold you this one up. I have it in two different uh, yarns too. So I dyed this yarn up. Um, this was my like initial one that I did. This is on a superwash merino wool in this beautiful coppery orange kind of color. Um, this size is the 42 bust size. Um, here we go. And I also wanted to knit a smaller size just to kind of get an idea of what the ease was like um, for the sweater. And uh, this one that I'm wearing is the 32 inch bust. And I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit. Um, I do have a 42 bust size and so with this design it's pretty versatile um so if you are worried a little bit about being short on yardage there is a lot of positive ease but this lace section in the front blocks out and it helps to fit a wide range of sizes um so keep that in mind when you are casting onto this sweater if you choose to um i'll show you which one so this is can get back a little bit this is what the 32 bust looks like this is there we go um, there's lace all the way to the top but that's just my skin showing through on my dress um, I'm wearing this over a three-quarter sleeve black linen dress with pockets um, I knit this this sweater is knit out of Maria of Tuscan Wool's Hearth DK. It's um, in the mushroom patch colorway. It's 100% BFL. Um, actually, I have I have one more skein left of it. So this is what I used for this sweater. Is my husband sneezing? 
Um, in the Hearth Decay, you get 246 yards per 100 grams. Um, like I said, I knit the 32 inch bust and I used just about all of the three of the four skeins that she sent me. Um, <clears throat> this is my Graceland wool yarn um, on my DK base. It's a superwash merino. And um, the I got, I used four, four full skeins um, of this one uh, for this. I used, I used um, my Tuft Willens Spice Chai uh, wool wash. I've been using that one right now regularly and it smells so good. So anyways, guys, I'm so excited about this pattern. Um, it is my first ever sweater pattern. Um, I did design it to fit a minimum of 10 sizes. It's written for 10 sizes, but just so you can tell like this is what the 32 inch bust looks like on me and I'm a 42 inch bust. And then I did knit uh, the 42 and it also fits me and it would fit somebody. I mean, it, it just stretches like crazy. You can't do that, buddy. You're shaking my camera. Get your feet off the table. I'm sorry, you guys. My son is actually sitting in here with me and um, he was pulsing his feet on the table and that's where my camera is. So a day in the life of me. Um, so anyways, yeah, go check that out if you're interested. I, it was a fast knit on both sweaters. Um, it could have just been because it was my sweater pattern that I was trying to release, but I got both these sweaters done in, um, less than a week a piece. Uh, you could make it longer. It is written from to have five to eight inches um, from the underarm. This one is, I did eight inches from the underarm before I did the ribbing. And I think for me, that's my preferred. Um, this one I did do five inches and then the ribbing and it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's fine. It fits underneath my dresses really, really, or over my dresses really, really nicely. I do have some um, different like maxi dresses uh, that I wear this one with. But this one I feel more comfortable wearing with my jeans, um, over long shirts, collared shirts, things like that. Um, today I'm obviously wearing <laughs> over a dress. I feel like I'm rambling about my sweater. So anyways, Autumn Pine Pullover available on Ravelry. Um, so there we are. I do have another sweater pattern that I've just started. Um, I'm excited to get that finished. I do want to have that test it and out by January. So I will be asking for a call out to testers again. Thank you to everyone who test knit for me this go around. I had some of the most amazing test knitters. Um, without them, I couldn't have done this. Um, and obviously my tech editor, She's incredible. So, <clears throat> anyways. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what I've been working on other than my sweater. Um, I do have some finished socks to talk about. Um, okay, let's talk about this one. This is my Autumn Harvest sock pattern. It's like uh, crazy around here. If you hear that, it's my dogs. Get down, get down. They're outside because they were wrestling in the house. So they're outside. This is the Autumn Harvest sock pattern. Um, this is available on Ravelry. It will be available shortly up on my Etsy shop site. Um, it's just a really fun autumn motif. I'm not sure where the second sock went. It's been chaos here. Um, so this was knit out of, um, a Nicole of Huloco skein. This is one of the, um, knit to, no, this is one of the grocery girls, um, sets that she was doing. Like she did a sister set, like knit two together set, uh, maybe last year. 
so I use that. Um, and then the gray is actually an old bit of Three Irish Girls in her Beck and Stretch Merino. I'm not sure what the colorway is. It's a gray. And then this um, maroon color is an old Graceland wool skein that I had just lying around. So anyways, that's super fun. I love I love this. It has a little bit of color work and then a little bit of simple but nice ribbing kind of grips your foot. Um, so that is uh, sock number one that I got done. Um, the next pair of socks that I got completely finished and I do have both of them here because I'm getting ready to weave in ends um, and they are going to be a Christmas gift. Um, I finished these socks from um, Molly of a Homespun House. I asked her in the beginning of the summer, I ordered one of her mystery skeins and she sent me this one. And it is just amazing. It's this perfect periwinkle with little flecks of greens and browns and reds. So, like I said, I'm going to weave in these ends. And then this is going to be a, a Christmas present. So I'm really excited about that. Um, the next three pairs of, your, of socks that I'm going to show you are also completely done. Um, I'm sending them to my aunt. I had made her, I'm just finishing weaving in these stinking ends. I really am terrible at weaving in ends, but I'm sending her some yarn, uh, some socks. She is so sweet. She actually asked me um, last year, over the next year, would you mind making me some socks? And I had intended originally to just send them a little at a time um, as they got done, but <clears throat> um, that didn't happen. And then I made her one pair. And then when I went to go visit my mom for one of her chemo treatments um, at the end of September, um, I ended up just giving those to my mom because she really liked them and they fit. So then it, I had to make another pair really quick anyways. Okay, so the first pair is this. Forgive me, I do not know the name of the colorway. The ball band went missing forever ago. I do know that this is Lolo Did It, and it is on whatever her 7525 base is, but I love this colorway. Um, I have one more end to weave in back here. And then this will be sent off next week. Uh, this does not really have a pattern. Um, so I just did like a nice little ribbing, like a three by one ribbing all the way around. Um, the other pair of socks I actually finished a really long time ago and I never wove in the ends and I they are too big for me which is perfect they will fit my aunt perfectly so I'm going to weave in these ends and send these off too um, but this is the olive trunkless elephants pattern that I wrote up a few years ago um, and then this colorway is trunkless elephants by Dana of Unwind Yarn Company and then this is just a gray mini stain that I had. Um, I love this pair of socks so much. So those are going to be heading out. Um, I knit all of my socks on US size zeros, uh, 2.0 millimeters. Um, typically I use DP, uh, DPNs. If I do use D DPNs, I love the um, Knitter's Pride Carbons. I like that little bit of texture that they have on them. If I'm using circular needles to magic loop, I pretty much only use Haya Haya Sharps. 
So um, those are kind of my two favorite needles. Oh my gosh. Okay. Last pair of socks that I want to show you um, that are finished is another um, pair from Lolo Did It. Love this colorway too. Uh, yeah. This is the Mercury um, sock pattern. Can't remember the gal's name who did it. But those are heading out also. So um, I have four, five completed pairs of socks, um, three of which are getting shipped off, one that's getting ends woven in for Christmas time. Oh my gosh. I just realized I have. I'll be right back. Okay, I realized I have another pair of socks that I just did cast on to this week um, that I wanted to show you. I have one done. I'm on the foot of the other one. Um, this is from my sweet friend Kayla of Lips on Sticks. This yarn is. Um, it's just a plain vanilla sock, but it screams Christmas time like gingerbread men to me. Um, so this is going to be a Christmas sock. It's on her gold Stellina base. No, that's a silver, silver Stellina base. So I'm on my way to the second one. It came with this cute little progress keeper, which is a Christmas light bulb. <laughs> so anyways, that is the pair I'm working on right now. I typically work on my socks at work on my lunch break. Um, I just eat my lunch at my desk and I get like an hour so <clears throat> that's kind of my lunchtime knitting. Anyways, um, I feel like I'm word vomiting all over the place with what I'm working on because I feel like I'm catching up and there's just so much to talk about. Okay. Um, I did pull this sweater out. Um, it's actually a poncho. I don't want to show you the charts. It'd be bad. I can show you the pattern. I'm working on this Nin Minelschik. I can't pronounce it to save my life. Pattern. It is a Caitlin Hunter pattern. Um, I started this right before I went to Tennessee to visit my mom and I had intended originally to be able to wear it um, while I was there, but that did not happen. So this is how far I'm at or how far I've gotten. I kind of want to have this finished um, for the later, like the beginning of the year, like January, February time I think it'll be perfect um the colors I'm using I am using some of my own hand dyed yarn held double um this is the lace eggs colorway it was an easter colorway this is a skein of Madeline Tosh DK and I made my daughter a sweater out of this colorway um and I had one or two skeins, two skeins left. I can't think of the name of it, but um, for Julie, for Julie, that's what it is. Uh, this is a skein of Malabrigo Rios. I'm not sure what the green colorway is. And then um, a skein of my own hand dyed charcoal is what I'm using. Um, this is like a new, I'm planning on picking this up um, one day a week. I've started this whole new plan. I'm really hoping it works well uh, for finishing some of my knits and then being able to still work on other ones. Um, so anyways, uh, I'm focusing on one project primarily through the week, except for a couple projects I focus on um, on certain days. So that way... I can really devote time to it. So 
Um, like the weekends are pretty much gonna be sweaters and blankets. And then uh, the weekdays I have um, other smaller projects that I'm devoting to that. That's what I'm doing. Um, the other project, the last thing that I picked up and have started working on, um, actually inspiration by Sue and Chelsea of the Legacy Fiber podcast. Um, they both picked up their crochet blankets. And so I did two. It's quite large. Already. Um, the width will fit my king size bed. That's how long it is. Um, I'm loving it so far. So um, I picked it up and I worked on it yesterday. It's the only thing I worked on yesterday project wise. Um, we cleaned the house. I worked on some advents to get the last couple ones packaged. Um, because I have to go to the post office in between my lunch breaks. That's the easiest way to do it for me. And so, anyways, I just take a couple each day to send them out um, because I only have an hour lunch break and then I can come back and work on my sock. But I packaged up a few advents. And um, today I'm dying yarn. Today I'm dying yarn, you guys, um, because I am participating in the advent calendar with um, um, I can't think at the moment um, yarn cafe creations is doing a advent calendar with multiple indie yarn dyers and I um, am going to be one of them so we are together all dyeing up 24 mini skeins and then sending them to her and then um, she's going to assemble all of them and send them back. And so I'm just really excited. I don't ever do advent calendars, um, like purchase one for myself because I never end up thinking about it. So anyways, gosh, I'm on like Tangent City. So anyways, I picked this up and my son and I watched Christmas movies and I got these four stripes. And, um, <laughs> I think my family is yelling downstairs, but anyways, um, so I picked that up and I was working on that mostly yesterday. Um, the only other plan project that I have other than I am working on a test knit for my friend Sarah of Sarah Craft Yarn. And then I'm, um, obviously I'm casting onto my new sweater, but, um, Kristen, um, Tristan, sorry, gosh, it's Kristen from Yarn Cafe Creations and Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn, and I'm like all over the place. This is my first cup of tea this morning. She has a hat pattern, and Molly of the Homespun House keeps knitting this hat pattern, and I finally pulled out what I think is going to be my perfect pairing. I have this beautiful skein of mohair that I ordered um, a few months ago from... Sue and Chelsea of Legacy Fiber Arts. And I have this lone skein of Madeline Tosh Twist Light. And I, this is in the Dust Weaver colorway. Uh, as you can tell, I bought this January of 2016. It's old, it's, it's going on four years old. It's well past time to use this. So I'm gonna pair these two for a hat. And I'm, so excited about that. Um, I'm going to cake this guy up and get this cast on soon. Um, hopefully this week I, with all my cast ons. I'm kind of excited about all the new ones. Um, oh, and I, I do these for my crochet blanket. I make these magic yarn cake balls. I basically just pull like five or six different, um, mini skeins out and wind them up into a ball and as one ends I join the next one and I do do the magic knot. I don't snip off the ends, I actually leave the long ends and then I continue to crochet with it um, through that knot because I think it 
will help hold it a little bit better, especially if those knots ever thought they would want to come loose. Um, I personally, it personally does not bother me. I mean, it's a blanket, so it's fine, but I'm trying to see if I can find an end to show you. Um, like right here, you can see like this little end pokes out, but it's not bad. Anyways, I can tell my family is now coming upstairs, so it's going to get loud. I hear the microwave going. So um, I'm going to let you guys go. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'm sorry this was so short. Uh, I hope to get another longer podcast in next week. But um, go check out my new sweater pattern. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks so much.